Alright guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today. For this one, we are going to do another little out and about video. So I am in Karlovac in Croatia and we're going to have a little look at the brew pub in this town. So this one is called Dobrakov and we'll do as we always do. We'll go in, we'll have a little look around the bar, we'll taste some of the beers and uh, hopefully we'll have a good time doing it. So yeah, nice to film some out and about videos in Croatia for you. Let's get stuck into this one. Dobrakov in Karlovac. Alright guys, so just to let you see the outside of this place, this is the kind of main entrance and there you can see Cafe Bar, Dobrakov. But this is pretty much in the middle of a market and we're almost right in the dead centre of the city when you uh, look at the map. And I'm going to say in these out and about videos I'm going to pronounce these Croatian things wrong so I will apologise in advance for that. But uh, yeah, we'll go in and have a little look around. So there you can see Cafe Bar, Dobrakov. When you come in you've got some really nice sort of woodwork here. Here's Ryan sitting enjoying his, uh, his beer. We've already filmed one tasting, but this will be the intro to the video. But of course, yeah, some really nice woodwork and things in here. It's pretty cool. I've never actually seen a brew pub kind of quite like this. But uh, yeah, look at all this beautiful woodwork in here. This is pretty awesome. Of course, we're in Karlovac, so there is a lot of Karlovacko, but they have their own beers as well. And um, yeah, when you come through the back here, it's really nice. As I say, I've never seen a little brew pub that's quite like this before. This is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, just completely different from anything else I've filmed on the channel before. Um, yeah, so this is really cool. But yeah, just look at the bar and things too. Really cool. I, love the, I, do, I do love the wood and the carvings and stuff here. You've got a nice big coffee machine. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Really, really cool. So. This is the beer that we are just going to taste in a second, so let's look at this one. Alright guys, well, time for our first tasting then here at Dobrakov in the Karlovac in Croatia. So, um, yeah, the story behind this little brew pub, if we can call it that, is that there is a brewery in the basement. The guy who started the brewery opened up this bar and now it has a new owner who you'll meet a little bit later on in the video. But the brewery is called Pivovara Podrum. So uh, yeah, the first beer that we're going to try is their kind of signature beer. So this one is just called uh, Cobb. It comes in at 4.4% ABV and it's a blonde ale. So um, yeah, as you can see with this one, it's got a lovely kind of uh, rich amber colour to it, which is nice. You can see there's a little bit of carbonation visible in this one. It does have a wee bit of activity to it. When it poured, it had about a half finger of a frothy, I would have said kind of cream coloured head. So exactly as you'd expect from a blonde ale, you know, these beers can be a little bit more amber. Some of them can be very light and sort of golden and things. It just depends on the individual beer. And as you can see, we've got a Krušovice. Uh, glass for this one and I do apologize for any bad Croatian pronunciations in this video it's a language that I have no familiarity with at all just getting used to it this is literally a few hours into this trip but uh, yeah looks the part let's have a wee look at the aroma and see what we can get from this one then you know it smells really nice very smooth very fresh so backbone of the beer you get a little bit of that kind of bread crusty sort of thing wee bit of kind of white bread wee bit of wholemeal bread as well um on top of that there's definitely a wee sweet a, a little bit of sweet element there you know some kind of mcvitie's digestive biscuit some maybe even a wee bit of a slightly uh, caramelly element to this beer as well i mean when you look at the color of this one you know that nice amber color that tells you there's going to be some sort of brown sugary leaning malt in this beer but um yeah from the malty side of things it comes across really nicely it just smells like a very light sort of fresh beer this one um kind of reminds me actually of some of the the cool spears that I've been drinking uh, to an extent. So um, yeah, interesting, very interesting. On the hoppy side of things, there's a little teeny bit of earthiness in there, a wee bit of a very light floral character, but for me the green component of this one really leans toward a kind of um, sort of fresh grassy sort of thing. Um, yeah, on top of that, with the fruity side of the beer, it's kind of what you would expect from this style. You know, there's a little bit of a kind of um, sort of peary little thing to it, maybe a wee touch of an apricot. It's quite oily though, so I'd be more tempted to say it's kind of peary, but you get a little bit of a kind of 
very slightly apple-y gooseberry note out of this one and you're getting some of that very light lemon limey kind of grassy character uh, you're getting a kind of lemon limey grassy character from the um, from the fruity side of things too but all in all it smells just like a very nice light fresh beer this one so uh, yeah let's have a taste of this this is simply called Cobb 4.4% Blondale from Piva Barra Boardroom, which is down in the basement underneath uh, Dobra Cobb. So, let's have a taste of this one then. Slanja, Skull, Cheers, Nastravia. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's really solid, actually. Um, it's just a really nice, smooth, easy going. Ale, this one. I was saying it smelt a little bit like some of the cool spears have come across, but definitely more sort of uh, definitely more kind of English blonde ale like in a certain sense. You do get a little bit of that bready graininess and bread crust out in the backbone of this. Um, that's solid. That's a really nice, just easy going drinking beer. And you know, Croatia, generally speaking, at least for me, living in Scotland and Sweden, is quite hot. So you can see why this type of beer would be quite popular down here. Um, yeah, this is nice actually, I like this, it gets a thumbs up from me. Let's break it down and describe it a wee bit more. Mm. My cousin Jobby Balls is saying he likes it too, he's giving me the thumbs up behind the camera. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so backbone of the, multi backbone of the beer, certainly backbone of it, you've got a little bit of that kind of bread crusty sort of thing, gives you a little bit of grainy character, there's one or two very slightly woody notes toward the front of the middle third of your palate. On top of that, you get a wee bit more of a kind of brown bready, wholemeal bread sort of thing, which is really nice. Um, on top of that, you have, uh, yeah, on top of that, you start to get a little bit of sweetness. So for me, there's a little circle in the middle of your palate, a little bit of a kind of slightly sweet caramel in the dead centre of that, but as you move further out, it's got a wee bit of a, it does have a little bit of a kind of, um, more McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing. So um, yeah, the way that this goes together is really really nice. Um, yeah, solid blonde ale from the malty, yeasty side of things. Um, it's nice. You do get, as I say, in the further into the aftertaste you go, you get a little bit of a cracker side type thing out of it. On the hoppy side of the beer, um, back corners of the palate, you get a little bit of, um, of earthiness in there. As you move further forward. You get a little bit of hot, you get a little bit of herbal character, but as you move toward the kind of front corners of the palate, nice kind of fresh, grassy sort of floral type thing to this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, around the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy. It's quite smooth, but at the same time, it's quite fresh. The green component's quite wet for me. Um, but yeah, the green component for me really leans toward that nice grassy sort of thing. I'm guessing, I'm not 100% sure, maybe the Croatians produce their own hops, but probably the hops in this I would think would be Slovenian, you know, from the Savinia Valley, something like that. But yeah, really nice beer that, and, and that, you know, just from that smooth, easy going perspective. So on the front third of your palate, backbone, you get a little bit of a kind of bread crusty sort of thing. There's a wee bit of a kind of uh, oiliness to the fruit here, but at the back of the front third of the palate, you know, wee bit of a, dry apricotty sultana sort of thing, wee bit of pear as you move further forward it's got a little bit of a kind of gooseberry apple sort of thing to it but um, yeah it's nice, a little bit of very slight hint of lime just behind the front tip of the tongue but yeah, uh, mouthfeel wise top end of light bodied for me, carbonation gives you a nice little bit of crispness which is good when this beer is an ale, not quite as dry as you're going to get from some laggers right enough um, but yeah, it's got that nice, light, easy-going mouthfeel. IBUs, I think this is probably about 20 IBUs at most. Uh, multi base as we say, got a little bit of graininess to it, smoothness and a wee bit of sweetness. Then the fruity part of the beer is just a little bit oily. But um, yeah, that's a solid golden ale, this one. So yeah, this was the cob from Pivovara Podrun in the basement. And uh, yeah, I quite like this one. Let's see what other beers we can try. But that is tasting number one here at, uh, uh, here in Karlovac. So yeah, let's go on to the next one. All right guys, so these are the two house beers uh, on tap from Pivovara Podrum in the basement. So we have Cobb, which is a 4.5% Blondale, and we have Surna Karobnica, if I've pronounced that correctly, a 4.4% sort of uh, black ale. So yeah, you're gonna see these two tastings on the video, so enjoy them. 
All right, guys. Well, time for tasting number two, and we're having something a little bit special for this one. So this particular beer is called Franco Copansco, if I've pronounced that right, I've probably butchered it, but this one comes in at 5.6% ABV, it is a Groot beer, so it's made with honey and cinnamon, so this should be pretty cool actually, um, but yeah, just, I'll let you have a little look at the bottle of this one, they've got two beers in bottle behind the bar, um, I'll just let the camera focus on this a little bit. Pretty cool. I think this is a half litre bottle, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm going to share this one with my cousin as well. But yeah, a honey and cinnamon group beer. Didn't think I'd find that in Croatia, to be quite honest with you. But let's pour this and we'll have a wee look at it. So there we are. I'll let Ryan pour his own when he comes back. But uh, yeah, anyway, as you can see, this one's poured a lovely, again, quite a blonde golden straw colour. You can see the head on this one is, we've poured about half the bottle, I would say, uh, but you can see it's poured with a nice, slightly more than a finger of a frothy, I would say kind of cream coloured head. But yeah, colour of this one, it's a nice kind of bright blonde, very light amber. You can see the carbonation in that is actually quite, quite active for sure. But um, yeah. Very, very nice looking beer. Other than that, I don't know what else to say about the appearance of this one. Let's have a look at the aroma and just see what we get. Oh, that's that's really interesting. Um, so, the first impression I get of this beer, it almost smells a little bit like bubblegum. Um, it's got this really bubblegummy backbone to it, which, and I did not expect that. So yeah, you've got a little bit of this almost like candied bubblegum thing to it. On top of that, you can definitely smell that nice kind of sweet honey, a little bit of that caramel wafer and kind of biscuity sort of thing. But the cinnamon sits on top of that and it's this, the honey and the cinnamon really combine just to give you this really candied bubblegummy uh, sort of thing. It's, it's really unusual that, absolutely. So on top of that, you have, you have this little, um, you do have this, you have a little bit of an almost, as I say, McVitie's digestive biscuit, a straight up sweet caramel, then the honey's in there, the cinnamon, a bit of a brown bready sort of thing. Yeah. I just did not expect to have this big bubblegummy aroma coming out of this beer. That's really unusual, actually. I've not tried too many Groots on the channel before. I mean, the Groot, from what I remember, was always a beer that used, um, I remember rightly, they were from Belgium, and instead of using hops, they used like herbs to kind of give you the bitterness and balance out the malty side of the beer. But this is, um, this is really interesting for sure. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this. On the kind of hoppy side, of, or the, the green component we should say, it does have a little bit of grassiness to it, but it comes across as quite herbal. I don't know if we really get any fruitiness out of this. It really just smells very kind of candied and bubblegummy. I don't know what else to say about the aroma of this one. It's, it smells like bubble, it really does just smell like bubble gum. Um, yeah, very unusual this. Let's have a taste of this one then and see how we go. So yeah, this is the Franco Pansco, a 5.6% group beer from Pivovara Podrun here in Karlovac in Croatia. Zhivali, let's taste it. Yeah, that's, it's nice, but it's pretty unusual, I have to say. Um, it's got this big, first impression is it's got this big bready backbone to it, and you can feel the honey and cinnamon on top of that, and then it's just, it's quite herbal, and kind of butter and uh, sort of bubble gummy in the background, I like it. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, middle of your palate, absolutely. You get this lovely, soft, kind of brown bready character, like a wholemeal brown bread. That forms the backbone of the beer. You can feel the cinnamon is kind of like 
blended in with that. The cinnamon flavours really blend in with the sort of breadiness that this beer has. On top of that, you absolutely get the honey. You can taste that light sort of honeycomb, uh, brown sugary sort of thing to this one. Maybe as you move in the dead centre of your palate, it does have a bit of a straight up caramel, and you can feel that the honey and kind of the, the sort of concentrated brown sugars are there, but as you move out toward the edge of the palate, it gets a little bit more kind of McVitie's, it gets like a little bit like that McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing, like a kind of cookie type vibe. Um, yeah, this is really very unusual, as I say, I've not reviewed too many group beers on the channel, only like two or three, so yeah, I'm not 100% sure what to make of this, but this is for the whole point of the channel, trying different beers, trying different things. So when you find something unusual like this, you just have to say, you know, bugger it, why not? Um, yeah. I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the malty side of this, other than the fact, maybe you get a little bit of woodiness and a little bit of a crackery flavour toward the front of the middle third of your palate, but it's good. On the green side of things, the edge of your palate, back corners of the, the palate, you get a little bit of earthiness. As you move further forward, it's a little bit herbal and a wee bit... You, you know, that herbal character really carries forward on the sides of the tongue. Around the front curve of the palate, it's definitely lighter and more uh, and more grassy for sure. Yeah. This is pretty nice, I have to say. I really like how this... Um, I do really like how this goes together in that, um, in that sense. The green component of this one is quite nice, but really this is a very, very herbal thing that you expect that of a group. On the fruity part of the beer, the front third of your palate, backbone of that, of course, is a little bit smooth and bready. On top of that, this is when you really get this kind of bubblegum candy sort of thing out of this one. Um, I really don't know how to describe that fruity side. I really just, it, to me, on that front third of your palate, it really feels very bubblegummy and candy-like. Um, yeah, this is really not what I expected from this one at all, but it's nice and it tests the palate. You can't ask for much more uh, when you come to a little brew pub in Karlovac in Croatia. That's in, it's in the middle of an old Yugoslav market. It's um, interesting for sure. Mouthfeel-wise then, to round off. Yeah, mouthfeel-wise. This one for me... Bottom end and mid-bodied, maybe pushing toward that middle of the spectrum. Carbonation, <coughs> breathe in the wrong way there. Carbonation is a little bit, is quite smooth. There's a wee bit of crispness to it, but a very smooth beer. A little bit oily, a little bit dry at the same time, very herbal. IBUs, oh, I think it's quite hard to say with this one. Maybe it's the equivalent of like 20 or 25 IBUs, but it's a herbal dryness you get out of this. And then you've just got a little bit of an oily kind of fruity character to this one. But um, yeah, this is pretty interesting. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This was the Franco Pansco, a group beer uh, with honey and cinnamon in it at 5.6%. And uh, yeah, we'll go on to our third tasting in a second. Catch you guys in a moment. So yeah guys, I decided it would be nice to film our last tasting just outside. So this is the view uh, that I have when I'm sitting doing the next tasting for you. But let's get on to our third and final tasting then. Alright guys, well time for our third and final tasting then here at Dobrakob in Karlovac. So the last beer that we're going to have a little look at comes in at 4.5% ABV. It's a black ale and it's called Serna Karobnitsa. And that translates as like the black witch, the black female magician, as I was told inside. So uh, yeah, this one, as we say, I think it's it's going to be some sort of black ale. I thought it might be kind of akin to like, you know, a Czech Tmavi or, um, you know, like a black, a German Schwarzby or something like this. But no, this is, this is definitely an ale. So maybe it's going to be something like a porter or that. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, what to expect from this one. But when it poured, it poured with a lovely kind of finger of a frothy, I would say kind of creamy fawn coloured head. There are one or two big bubbles uh, sticking toward the bottom of the glass, but otherwise there's not too much in the way of uh, visible carbonation. But um, yeah, it, um, it looks really nice. You can see there's a little bit of natural kind of haze to this one. Um, yeah, it looks really good, but as you can see, lovely dark ebony kind of rosewood colour this one. Uh, very curious about this. So let's look at the aroma. Oh, that smells really nice. Um, 
straight away with this beer, it's got a lovely big smoothness to it. So you can smell a little bit of a kind of toasty, well-fired bread crust backbone to the beer. But on top of that, there's some lovely, really nice, smooth brown bready character there. It's almost got the sweetness of like a German rye bread. It really is like that. Then on top of that, there's some lovely toasty caramel, a bit of a sweeter caramel in there as well. This beer, it really does remind me of like, it's kind of like a mixture, just the aroma of this. It reminds me of like a Czech Cherny, uh, the kind of brown laggers that you get in the Czech Republic, and also the Czech Tmavis, the, the black laggers that you get there. It almost smells as if it's somewhere in the middle of that. It's de it doesn't come across like a porter or anything like that. It's too smooth and too bready to be like an English porter, that's for sure. Um, yeah, that's a lovely, lovely smelling beer. Um, yeah, aroma-wise, this is really nice. But as I say, a little bit of a roasty, toasty backbone to it. Lots and lots of smooth brown bread on top of that, like a German rye bread. Toasty brown sugars, a sweet caramel, a little touch of biscuit as well. There are one or two little hints of like a nutty, woody sort of thing in there, and um, it goes together really, really nicely. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. Lovely smelling beer, this, from the malty side of things. On the hoppy side of the beer, um, on the hoppy side of the beer, lovely little touch of smooth earthiness to this one, some nice floral aromaticity, and a little bit of a light grassy character as well. Um, this goes together really, really nicely, I have to say. Um, yeah, aroma-wise, this is this is nice. On the fruity side of things, you know, you've maybe got a little bit of a kind of black curranty, black berry sort of thing. Um, maybe a little bit of a juicy fig or something like that too. Just a little touch of red fruit character to this beer. But overall, this one smells lovely. Somewhere between a Czech Cherny and a Czech Tamavi for me. So a Czech brown lager and a Czech uh, black lager. It's something like that in terms of its aroma. But let's have a taste of it and uh, see how we get on. So yeah, the uh, Surna Karovnica, if I pronounced that right, uh, from uh, Piva Vara Podrum in the basement of Dobre, of, uh, how do we say it, uh, Dobra Kob, <laughs> here in Karlovac. I'm going to mess up these, these Croatian pronunciations throughout this kind of mini-series that we're going to do, so my apologies to if you're watching from Croatia. But let's get stuck into this one, a 4.5% black ale of some description. Slanje, Skal, cheers, Shveli. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Um, just from the flavour profile, I'm going to say straight away, this beer is like a slightly thicker and kind of creamier um, Czech Tamavi. It's really like that. It's got the smoothness that we expect of these Czech lager beers. Um, but obviously it's an ale. We know that definitely it's an ale. Remember, the main difference between an ale and a lager, lagers use bottom fermenting yeast, lower temperature fermentation, 8 to 12 Celsius, whereas ales use uh, top fermenting yeast and they ferment between uh, 15 and 18 degrees Celsius. But um, yeah, this is really, really nice, I have to say. Um, lovely, lovely beer. So yeah, this is giving you just here at Dobra Cobb, you've got the both ends of the spectrum. You've got a lovely light blonde ale that you can drink, and then you've also got something at the darker end of the spectrum, which is equally as drinkable. But yeah, let's break the flavour of this beer down. Backbone of it, you've got a lovely toasty, well-fired bread crust. On top of that, you get some nice kind of brown sort of German rye bread in there. Toward the front of that middle third of the palate, there's a wee bit of a woody, slightly nutty character to this one. But yeah, this is a big, nice, bready black ale, this one. Um, yeah, it's definitely not a porter. It's definitely not like an English porter, in my uh, in my opinion. It, it's not. I don't think it's a stout either, to be quite honest with you. It doesn't really fit into that category. It really does feel the beer that this reminds me most of is like a Czech Tamavi, a Czech Black Lager. It really is like that. But as I say, it's an ale. So, on top of the on top of the kind of brown bready layer in this beer you start to get the brown sugar so you can feel there's a sort of toasty, well-fired, um, a sort of toasty brown sugary note there. In the dead centre of your palate you can feel there is a little bit of a more oily sweet caramel but um, you're also getting some biscuity notes out of this beer but the further into the aftertaste you go you get a little bit of woodiness and a little bit of a nutty character coming out of this beer. Um, yeah, so on the hoppy 
side of things with this one. I think we've said everything we need to about the multi back one the beer. In the back corners of the pallet, there's a little bit of earthiness as you come further forward. It's a little touch more herbal, and then as you push toward the front corners of the pallet, it's a little bit more grassy. A little, you know, it's got a little bit more slightly more bright floral character to it, but then round the front curve of the tongue it's a little bit more oily and uh, grassy. This is a really, really nice beer from the hoppy perspective and the malty side of things. Let's look at the fruity side of things then. So yeah, fruity side of this beer for me, it's kind of as I was expecting from the aroma. Backbone of that front third of your palate is a brown bready kind of character, on top of that you're getting some uh, red fruity notes. So at the back of the front third of your palate, it's got a little bit of that um, slightly dry kind of figgy note, but as you move further forward, it becomes a little bit more kind of black currenty. But the fruity notes, I would say, are very, very light and kind of wet. So yeah, a little bit of fig and a little bit of a black currenty note out of this one for me. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice, interesting beer. It's quite different from anything else I've had in recent times. But like I say, stylistically speaking, this one is more like a slightly thicker and creamier version of a Czech uh, Tamavi Lager for me. That's what it really reminds me of, to be honest with you. So mouthfeel-wise, um, mouthfeel-wise, this beer for me is kind of bottom end of mid-bodied. The carbonation is very, very smooth. Like I say, this beer has quite a rich, thick, creamy mouthfeel to it in certain ways. Uh, in terms of IBUs, I think this one is maybe about 30 or 40 IBUs. You're getting some bitterness from the malty character in this one, particularly further into the aftertaste, but also from the hoppy side of the beer. The malty side of the beer, as we said, it's got a bit of kind of dry, roasty character to it. It's got a little bit of breadiness, and it's also got um, it's also got some really nice uh, kind of brown sugary and sweet notes to it as well. A little bit of a kind of red fruity note in there. But um, yeah, I do like how all of this goes together. This is a lovely, lovely beer. So I've forgotten how to say the, the name of this beer in Croatian, but this is the, the Black Witch from, <laughs> from a people on a podium in the bot in the basement of the pub here. So yeah, I keep forgetting this Dobra Cob. I keep forgetting the name of these Croatian words. It's like when I've been to uh, Japan and Korea and things and trying to remember new vocabulary all the time. But this is a very, very nice beer, very reminiscent of a Czech Mavi black lager in my opinion. So yeah, um, I think that is our, that's the end of this tasting then. So I'll catch you in a second with my final thoughts and some other things on the pub then. So yeah, I noticed this on the window outside. So you can see that this was established back in 1999 and the symbol of Dobrokov is the deer. So uh, yeah, celebrating their 15th anniversary at this point, I guess. There you go. All right, guys, well, it appears I told you a lie. We are going to do a fourth and final tasting then here at Dobra Cobb. I got handed this beer as I was going to leave and told to taste it at home, but I thought, well, I'm in a really nice little brew pub. I should taste it here. So, yeah, the beer that we're going to look at for our last one then is called Anissa. So it comes in at 5.9% ABV, and uh, basically this is a beer with aniseed or licorice. So this is going to be quite an interesting one. I've not had too many low ABV beers with um, with licorice or aniseed in them. That's usually an, an adjunct that is reserved for, you know, big 10, 11, 12% Imperial Stouts in my experience. So um, yeah, this should be really quite interesting actually. Let's pour it and see what we, ha what we get. Um, and also with this one, I was given a Lashko glass from Slovenia, so that's pretty cool as well. Lashko is... I've had two different types of Lashko on the channel before. But uh, yeah, curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. The Anissa from Pivovara Podrum. So let's do this. So, as you can see, this beer has poured a really nice, quite deep, golden uh, colour, this one. Um, yeah, because remember, aniseed is like a sort of clear, viscous liquid. Uh, the head on this beer, I think we've poured about maybe half of the bottle in here. The head is a lovely kind of cream colour. That's faded away to a very sort of thin, foamy layer. Then round the edge of the glass, you do have a thicker kind of thing to it as well. You can see the carbonation is a little bit active. It is quite nice. 
Um, but yeah, you can see there's a sort of steady stream of uh, bubbles in this one just going up toward the top of the head there. It looks really, really nice. Um, didn't expect it to be quite as clear as this, I have to say, but it looks like a kind of regular lager beer or blonde ale or something like that. But yeah, other than that, I don't think we need to say anything else about the appearance. So let's take a look at the aroma and see what we've got with this one. <laughs> Straight away with this, it's licorice, it's aniseed all over the place. Um, that dominates the aroma. You know, you can't say much more about it than that. Um, yeah. So, for me, it's kind of like the one we had earlier, the, the sort of group beer, it's a little bit like that. So the backbone, you get a little bit of a kind of bread crust, a little bit of a brown bread. There's a wee bit of a slightly caramelly note to it as well. Um, but yeah, then on top of that, you've got this lovely big aniseed note to it. And for me, as I say, that's just quite unusual to have aniseed in a golden beer like this. Usually aniseed, licorice type flavours. I would associate with big imperial stouts and so on. So um, yeah, really not sure what to make of this. So on the green side of things, it's got a little bit of a, it's got quite a lot of a herbal character as you would expect with aniseed. There's a bit of grassiness in there and a wee bit of earthiness. Um, yeah, the aroma that's really interesting. On the fruity side of things, there's like a little bit of an almost gooseberry, peary sort of uh, character to it. But yeah, this is just a really very quirky and quite unusual beer. I'm not sure what to say about this one other than what I've, I've said there. You know, we've had two, this, this is the second of two very unusual beers that we've had here from uh, Pivovara Podrum, so why not? Let's get stuck into this one then, Jveli. You know, from the aroma, you would think that this beer is going to be really dominant with its kind of aniseed character, but it's actually a lot more kind of subtle than you'd expect. It's quite, um, it's actually quite a well-balanced beer. You know, quite often when you get beers that have these adjuncts added into them, the adjunct can just dominate everything. But this does it quite nicely. Um, but yeah, definitely, you have to like licorice, I think, to like this beer. But let's break that flavour down for you a wee bit more. So, backbone of the beer, middle third of your palate, you get a wee bit of a bread crusty kind of note. There's some brown bread on top of that, but then you get these big oily aniseed, licorice notes out of this one. And um, when you go further into the aftertaste, you can feel in the middle of your palate, there's a little circle there. There's a wee bit of sweet caramel, some kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit kind of cookie notes to it. But uh, yeah, the malty base, the, the sweet side of this beer is really very oily and aniseed leaning. So yeah, it's, it's quite interesting for sure. I've never had a beer quite like this. You know, we've reviewed 3,300 beers on the channel before. Um, and that's not including all the ones in these out and about videos because there's probably another few hundred on top of that. But this is definitely one of the most random beers that I've come across in filming over nine years for you here on Rampant Lion Reviews. Um, yeah, on the sort of hoppy herbal side of things then, I'm just thinking stylistically this beer is probably most like, best described as like a group beer. It's one of these very herbal things. Uh, but on that sort of hoppy herbal side of the beer, in the back corners of the palate there's a wee bit of earthiness. As you come further forward it's a little bit you know, you get a bit more herbal character. That comes all the way to the front corners of the palate. There's a little bit of a um, floral aromatic thing and then round the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy. But that sort of green component this beer has is very oily, but that's in keeping with the, 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 the sort of aniseed vibe that this beer gives you. Front third of your palate then, fruity side of things. So for me, front third of your palate. There's a wee bit of breadiness underneath, but it's big and oily on top. I do get a little bit of gooseberry out of this one. I think, goose, you know, other than gooseberry, I don't really get all that much out of it. It's quite candied on the fruity side of things. Um, yeah, I think gooseberry and maybe just a teeny little bit of red fruit is how you would describe this one. But that this is definitely one of the most random beers I've ever had on the channel, actually. Um, yeah. 
I don't know what else to say about that. I, I sort of to have an aniseed licorice golden ale or an aniseed licorice grouped, I think is probably um, the best style descriptor for this one. Is really really unusual. Uh, but I, I'd quite like it. I could only do a little taster of it. I think this is a half liter bottle. Um, I don't think I'll manage that. So as I say, I'm going to share it with the other guys in the pub. But uh, yeah, mouthfeel wise then, to round off. It's um, mouthfeel wise, it's quite, it's top end of mid body, bottom end of full body, smooth carbonation, big and oily. In terms of IBUs, like you know, 20 IBUs, something like that. The malty backbone is lovely and smooth, lovely and um, kind of sweet and oily. And then on the fruity side of things, it's, to me it's just like a little bit of a, a gooseberry note that you get out of this. It's not overly fruity. But um, yeah, I think that's everything we need to say about this. So this was the Anissa. I suspect this would be a grouped um, at 5.9% ABV from Pivara Podrum. So this is definitely going to be our last tasting here. But uh, yeah, it's been really cool to try this one. Something very, very quirky and very unusual here on the channel. So we'll go outside. I'll give you my final thoughts on my time here at uh, Dobra Cobb. And we'll talk, and that'll be that. I'll tell you about the costs and things. Catch you in just a second. So guys, I was sitting in the pub and Ivan appears. So Ivan is the uh, brewer and he's been brewing 20, since 2016. Yes. Yes. So, what is your favourite beer? Oh, I'm in the world. Yeah. I don't know, I can't decide. Can't decide. What about a favourite style of beer? Uh, ale. Ale? Oh, ale. Okay. Yeah. So, I would say if you come here, um, when I've been here, they've had the cob and they've had a nice black ale. These beers, very nice, very smooth, and very drinkable. So, yeah, come along and make sure you try Ivan's beer. I enjoyed them. Of course, it's cool. Thank you. Very, really cool to get Ivan on the video. It's not often you come to do a little out and about video and you actually meet the brewer. So, it's awesome, guys. Yeah, come to come and visit Karlovac. You never know what can happen. All right, guys. Well, my final thoughts then on Cafe Bar Dobra Cobb and uh, the beers from uh, Pivovara Podrom. So yeah, I had a really nice time here. Um, I reviewed four beers for you, so in total that was 75 kroon, which is pretty much about 10 euros. So yeah, you can't really argue with that at all. Uh, but all of the beers were really nice, the two that were on tap were really good. The other two beers that we tried on the bottle were very, very quirky and unusual as well. Um, but yeah, big shout outs to Bojidan behind the bar and Ivan the brewer who kind of popped in when I was doing my thing. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend that you come and check out uh, Dobra Cobb in the middle of Karlovac in Croatia. Really nice introduction to Croatian craft beer and definitely in quite an unusual location, at least for me. But uh, yeah, that's what it's all about when we do these out and about videos in different countries. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. So this is Cafe Bar Dobra Cobb and the beers from Pivovara Podrum in the basement. So catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. Check out my social media, check out their social media, and uh, yeah, see you guys in another out and about video in Croatia very, very soon. Giveli.